Anybody else, please? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my dear uh, Ahmad Didat, I was very impressed with your, with your speech tonight. But as a Muslim, there is something that is not clear in my mind. And I think a lot of other people uh, would, would also like to get some clearance on this matter. Um, of course, you, you did quote that uh, um, it is said that uh, Prophet Muhammad would be, the, would be the one. I mean, uh, you, you said that, uh, I mean, it is quoted that uh, he will be raised from amongst their brethren. Now, <clears throat> of course, this means that he will be a great person. But why did God give him that greatness, uh, which was so short-lived? Why did he achieve that greatness only for 23 years of his life? Why wasn't he a great man from the time he was born? Why wasn't he, um, why wasn't he so great? Uh, I wouldn't say great, but why wasn't he so popular uh, like Jesus was? Why, why did he achieve um, world popularity only years after his birth? Uh, could you explain that to us? I'm sure you will do a, a lot of justice to a lot of other Muslims and non-Muslims in this place. Why did God wait for 40 years before revealing the Quran to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Suppose the Quran was revealed to him at the age of 30. See, like Jesus Christ, he was baptized at the age of 30 in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. So he said, look, why 30? Why not at 25? And if it was 25, why not at 20? Why wasn't he born with a book in his hand? <laughs> These are questions that you have to address to Allah. You see? As I said, the Quran is a book of telegrams. You remember? The Quran is a book of telegrams from Allah through his messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now you have to send a telegram to him, God Almighty. Ask him, why did you wait till the age of 40 before you delivered this message to him? It's not me, it's not in my hands. He chose Moses at the age of 40. He chose the other prophets, David at the age of 40. He chose Jesus at the age of 30. That's his business. When the time is ripe, the message is given. With regards to greatness, you see, if you read, I don't know whether you're in touch with what is going on in the world today. A certain Michael Ash Hart has written a book called The Top 100. The most influential men in history. And you see the number one, Muhammad Sallallahu In the Times Magazine, the greatest leader of all times, Jules Masserman, a Jew, a United States psychologist, is the greatest leader of all time, was Muhammad. Lamartine, in his history of the Turks, is the greatest man that ever lived, was Muhammad. I'll be dealing with this aspect of greatness in the third lecture, I think, Muhammad the Greatest. So I hope you will hold your horses till then. Why did God choose this man, you know, at the age of 40? And why is he recognized today? In the lifetime, every prophet, you know, you made a statement. I think that maybe you didn't know. You slipped out of your mouth. That Jesus was a great success. You know, Muhammad had to make migration. His companions had to make two migrations to Abyssinia. Jesus was a great success. That is not true. You know it's not true. You know what was his end, according to the Christian, what they say? The man was killed on the cross. Is that greatness? Is that success? And all his disciples forsook him and fled. They left him in the lurch. All. 100% failure. And today, the Christian world are not following Jesus at all. According to that Michael at heart, he says, that you see the honor for Christianity should be divided between Jesus and Paul. And actually Paul is the real founder of Christianity, not Jesus Christ. So even as a religion, the religion that is carrying his name, Christ Christianity, is not his religion. So I think, you know, my son, uh, you should check up these things, you know, before making a statement to say, you know, this man was more successful than the other. The most successful of all religious personalities is Muhammad, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, edition, 11th edition. Most successful. 
Well, I don't know. Nobody paid. I don't know who, who paid them, you know, to write that down. The, um, this this, this uh, um, note here, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. Um, Moses, I do believe, performed miracles. Um, Jesus performed an abundance of miracles. But I have no knowledge of Muhammad performing miracles. Yes. Could Mr. Dira just um, elaborate on that? Where, yeah, I'd like to say that uh, Jesus is like Moses because they both, both perform miracles. Uh, the question is, if it's not, well, it's not very clear to part of the audience, that uh, Moses performed miracles, Jesus performed miracles, but he has no knowledge whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad performed miracles. Now, in the book of traditions, more than 300 miracles are ascribed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad But the Muslim does not make an issue of it because those miracles of the prophets gone by are things in books. They are a matter of history. So saying that, look, my prophet did this and your prophet did that. But here, again and again, Allah, but are you listening, brother? I see that you are, you see your head is down there. I don't know whether you're listening to me. If you look at me, then I can address you. Look, look at me. If you look at me, look, your head is right down. No, no, I... You're looking at the video camera and you are ashamed. Look, you see now, I'm talking to you. Why don't you come a little forward then, if the light is hurting you? I said the Quran again and again. <laughs> yes. You see, again and again, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallam, he referred to the Quran. A living miracle. You see, the miracles of Moses, you know, crossing the Red Sea, right, striking the rock and rivers gushing forth. Miracles of Jesus turning water into wine, killing those 2,000 pigs, drying up the fig tree from the very roots, right. Now, these are things in books. You see, you say, look, man, I don't know whether it happened or it didn't happen. It might sound like a fairy tale to most people. So he said, look, Talk about this is a living miracle. And I'm going to prove this to you, you know, in a lecture in the series, Al-Quran, a visual miracle. In other words, that you today in the 20th century, you can verify that this book is the miracle left behind, a living miracle of Muhammad left with you. You need a little patience for that. But if you look up the books of traditions, there are more than 300 miracles attributed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, but the Muslim does not go out of his way to prove the bona fide of his prophets by those miracles. He said, here, a living miracle, you can see for yourself and verify yourself. So I, I, I look forward to seeing you there. Al-Quran, a visual miracle, the living miracle of Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you. That is at Athlone Civic Center in Athlone. To answer the brother's question, to be sure he's got it to say that the Quran is the miracle which everybody can see and touch even up to today. Is there any other question from the audience? Please come forward. Good evening, Mr. Ridad. I appreciate your explanation for that particular scripture verse, but I have one question. What you have said tonight, is that authenticated in the Quran? Can you quote a particular verse whereby Muhammad claimed himself to be that particular prophet? You see, the Quran is not the words of Muhammad. This is it. The Quran is the word of God. And God Almighty is testifying. This is not Muhammad's storybook, what he can say, this, make this claim, that claim. So, school, tell them. See, I read at the very beginning. Tell them. Araitum in kana min indillah. Can't you see? Are you blind? Like Jesus told the Jews. He says, you know, the sheep and the goats, they hear their master's voice. How is it that you can't hear your master's voice? 
you know, the, you as a human being. You should have more brains than the, cam than, the, the, than, the, than the sheep and the goats. If they can recognize their master's voice, Jesus assumes, and God Almighty also assumes, that you as, a, as a, an intelligent creature of his, you will be able to recognize this as the word of God. And in that word of God, he says, وَشَّهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى مِثْلِهِ And a witness from among the children of Israel bore witness of one like him. And word for word, we find fulfillment. That Jesus, Moses, through the mouth of Moses, God Almighty speaks. He says, like unto thee, like you, mislaka. Mislaka in Arabic. Mislahi. So we have, this, have given you more than 20 different reasons to say that, look, this prophecy refers to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. God Almighty makes the claim on his behalf. He said, this is the verification. You read that in that booklet, if, it's, if you have that, the very first verse that's written on the top, introduction, the very first verse on the first page, you'll find that quotation from the Quran. You didn't get that book of ours? Is the Bible God's, what the Bible says about Muhammad? The very first page, you'll see that verse there, which is the confirmation from God Almighty that this is the prophecy finds fulfillment in the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa do you see whether this message be from Allah, God Almighty, and yet you reject it? It is, and a witness from among the children of Israel, for witness of one like him. Do you see whether this message be from Allah, God Almighty? Now I had read through the translation of the Quran, and there's one part that struck me when he, when he gave the scripture that, that he received from the angel Gabriel, in the form of the Holy Spirit. When he received it and he gave it to them, I would like to ask you one question, but that is not the, that is not the whole point of the thing is that can, I'd, I'd like to know for sure why, point number one, when he revealed the, the, the Quran, right? When he revealed the word to them, can you tell me why? Firstly, did his eyes turn red like fire and his temper and had a bad temper and yet further down it brought it to, to a conclusion that he had to stress it that way to get the attention, right? But now what I'd like to know is that, can you tell me for sure that the, not to, I speak under full correction, and I'd like to know there is a difference between the Holy Quran and the, and the Bible. There's a very big difference.